Hey, so how's your new telescope? My new scope? Yeah. Oh, as compared to my old 10-inch Apertura Dobsonian reflector? Yeah, so what's your new telescope? So my new telescope is the Orion XX16G go-to, the beast of a scope that's like 195 pounds or something. Yeah, that's the one. I know weight is something you were really concerned about when you ordered it. How was your first night out with it? My first night out last night was awesome. Um, definitely sore, not from just like carrying it and everything, but uh, you know, I worked 60 plus hours last week, but I'm also sore from my back. Like, you know, um, you get got to get in some weird positions. It's not like a 10 inch where you can observe everything easily from the zenith, you know, all, all over and stuff. Like, you can't just zoom zoom the zenith like that, you know, you got to stand, you know, I was here, here, put, put it on this, my eyepiece case here. Like you can see, like I was standing on my eyepiece case at times because it's just a little bit of a boost off the ground. And then I had another little step stool that was a little bit higher and like, but yeah, you know, your back is, if you got back problems and stuff, you know, you definitely want to consider that. And I, I feel like I need to find the sweet spot between the, the step stool that's like too high and the eyepiece case which is probably just not good you know in, in principles you get get dust tons of dust and dirt near your optics is, is never good you know but uh yeah first light was really good man I mean the scope performed really well I feel like <clears throat> you know I did several two star <coughs> alignments and I even did like a, a brightest star alignment and I can make a separate video with the whole sync scan thing um which goes through the you know, procedures, but I feel like on all my alignments, it wasn't, you know, perfect. I, I you know, first couple of times I used the illuminated reticle, uh, 12 millimeter eyepiece that they got with the crosshairs. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like I, I had those lined up pretty decently, pretty good. But once you actually, you know, get the alignment successful notification, um, and then you go to look at say, you know, M8, the Lagoon Nebula or something, it would just, it would slew the scope, you know, and it would just be like a little bit down and to the left or something, you know, out of the field of view, which is, which is kind of frustrating in, in a way. Um, but at the same time with, with the kind of the brighter DSOs, it's not that big of a deal because you can find it, you know, pretty easily, but, but it still feels kind of dumb to like be searching for something when, you know, it's supposed to be in the center of the eyepiece, so I, I still have some troubleshooting, some work to do on that. But so the latitude and longitude of this gravel lot that I was uh, observing from was an issue of concern for me, just just because um, how the sync scan is set up. And like I said, I'll do a separate video on this possibly, but you have to convert, you know, the latitude and longitude from was it decimals to degrees, mm -hmm. you know, arc minutes or whatever. And it's a pretty easy formula, really, but... And, uh, yeah, it's just just weird. Just a couple little little things, you know, that I was kind of fretting over. Did you use an online calculator for it? Um, I did at first, but I, I found a YouTube video was, was more helpful. Um, it just gave a simple formula, like, you know, say my... And it, and it was really a struggle for me, and I'm not the most educated person. But, uh, you know, I didn't know, like, his latitude, you know, east and west, his longitude, like, long, like, up and down, you know. But, it, you know, I'm still kind of working through that whole thing. But, like, it's weird because, like, the latitude, say, is, like, um, like, goes, like, around, like, you know, like, the equator and stuff. But it's measured in, like, north and south. But, like... I don't know, maybe this is faulty information. Like longitude no, no, is up right. and down, but it's measured east to west. So it's kind of yeah. the lines weird. the lines run up and down. So then each segment is left and right from one another. Yeah, so like I don't know, stuff like that kind of threw me off. But anyway, so that was kind of weird. I I and uh I had to work through all that. And uh <clears throat> and so I just you watched this YouTube video that kinda of helped me with it and uh I should, so, and uh, anyway, I got some I got some uh, questions here that I kind of made for myself here to to help anyone out who's uh, 
considering getting this, uh, you know, because I bought, I bought the whole package, man, from Orion. I bought the, the Orion XX16G. I bought the, the cases. You can show a couple of cases over there if you want to. Yeah, I'll put a picture in. And I bought the, uh, you know, the light shroud, the Dynamo Pro. Do you think the cases were worth it? I do. I do. I mean, they're definitely overpriced. Everyone says that in the reviews. <clears throat> so, you know, it's, it just is what it is, you know. But they're definitely, because uh, actually the whole thing, fortunately, thankfully, it broke down and fit into my Honda Civic, you know, to and from the observing site. And I was, that was one thing I was uh, concerned about, the base plate. You know, I measured it to see if it would, the width, the girth would fit in my trunk, and it did. And uh, so, yeah, so this thing really does, you know, I got a 2012 uh, Honda Civic, just regular sedan, it's four-door, and uh, definitely uh, fit in there along with my observing chair. I got the uh, the overpriced observing chair, starbound uh, observing chair, and, you know, my eyepiece cases, and, uh, you know, Stool. several bags, yeah, stools, all, all kinds of stuff, but yeah. So the whole whole package fit in my uh, four door sedan, which was pretty sweet. Thankful for that. And something cool I found out is um, is like if you want to show those two cases, like this is pretty much all I brought in from the. Uh, I'll add pictures. From the observing, uh, you know, session, and I figured I'd I'd leave my, you know, that sixty something pound huge circular base plate. I'll leave that in my trunk, you know, because I. Cause I'm not, I didn't get, you know, a lot of the, I know a lot of the old school guys have the wheelbarrow handles and they have like a garage and they just roll it out, you know, but you know, I have to break mine down and, you know, assemble it every time. And, uh, and so I'm just going to leave a lot of the hardware, um, in my, in my car, you know, which is cool. So you only got to bring, actually, you know, it's, it's cool. Like with my 10 inch dive, I got to bring in the whole entire base every time and stuff with this. I, I mean, I think this is how it's going to be, you know, it seems like it's going to work. So what do you think is the biggest difference between your 10 inch and this 12 inch? Um, something that I really, really love about the, the oh, it's actually 16 inch. The, yeah. Oh, the 16 inch. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, so it's over like uh, two, two and a half times uh, light gathering uh, capabilities, you know, so it's pretty significant. The views of, of Jupiter and Saturn were awesome, man. Um, <coughs> according to the astrophoric I think that's how you say it, that app last night. Um, the transparency was pretty bad. The transparency, um, it was either poor to cloudy for the most of the night, but the seeing was average to above average, I believe. Or, or it wasn't, the seeing wasn't bad, you know, and the cloud cover had some clouds, but whenever there was not clouds, you know, it was, I mean, it was like dark blue for most of the night for the, if you're familiar with that astrophoric app. And uh, the views, the, the views themselves, especially of the planets, um, were really, really good, man. I was seeing, I was seeing several cloud bands on Jupiter, <clears throat> you know, the great red spot, in much more detail than my, ten, I mean, my 10 inch performs really, really well too, you know, don't get me wrong. But I remember I was just camping out on the planets last night. And one thing cool about the, um, and also the nebula was cool, like M8 was like, because they, so one thing with was uh, the wires were like all over the place and I was kind of scattered and disorganized. And when I was slewing my scope at one point, like I heard my scope go like it was slowing down. I was like, crap, what, what's happening? You know, and then like my, my secondary do heater wire, eyepiece heater wire, something was like caught in between the, the two uh, round, you know, plates, base plates. I was like, crap, you know, and I had to, like, wiggle them loose, and I learned, like, you have to um, really account for space and, and leave everything actually, you know, your Dynamo Pro and all your stuff, like, on the base itself. That way, when it rotates, it's all kind of, like, going together, you know, because a lot of times you'll slew, and it'll go way over here, way down there, and uh, and it's cool, like, with this trust tube, this is my first trust Dob. It's cool having access to the mirrors, both the primary and secondary mirror. Like with a solid tube dob, tube dob you, it's a real pain to get access because I have this little like blower, like this little turkey baster hand blower thing, and uh, and you just you just like blow off the mirrors like when you're done, real easy. Because there was like a couple black specks and stuff, and you just it's pretty cool to have you know have that. That's pretty 
it's a convenient feature of a truss tube you know design in general and like I said I got this cheap eyepiece heater so um, does it track well it tracks extremely well that's, that's awesome I mean you can you can center an object <clears throat> yeah like the tracking is better than the go-to in my opinion you can center an object and I went and sprayed bug spray on myself because the mosquitoes were tearing me up and uh, <clears throat> You know, changed eyepieces and stuff, and then bam, like Jupiter is like still right in the middle center of the field of view. It's awesome. So, you mean like that the tracking was more valuable to you than the go to feature? I mean, the go to, I, I wouldn't say more valuable. I mean, it was very valuable, but you just said that the tracking was like more accurate. Is that what you mean? Than yeah. the go to? Yeah, okay. it was definitely more accurate. The, the go to was helpful, but it wasn't. And then I got a bunch of questions about um, yeah the th three three cooling fans yeah so what visual um, difference can I expect between a ten inch and a sixteen inch? On the, I mean I noticed it on the planets. One thing I, I regret um, is that uh, on these um, dust caps, you know they had these little circles where you can take it off. I think they're called aperture stops. I've never used them, but I think they're supposed to be for it's like it kind of like, <clears throat> it like in a way, it supposedly increases your f ratio and makes it like a real long scope, and it gives you like you know supposedly you could see better details on planets and stuff by by making these small you know. <clears throat> Some people make them out of cardboard. They just cover their whole um, you know scope, you know the aperture they cover the whole aperture with cardboard and they cut out like a little hole and like supposedly it's supposed to give better planetary views and I definitely want to try that. But yeah, the details in the planets were great. I mean, what do you regret? What do I regret? You're saying one thing I regret about Oh yeah, that. yeah. I, I didn't use that last night. You know, I was hanging out with the planets for a long time and it was, <clears throat> they looked awesome like just nor normally, you know. I even got a couple, some good pictures like cell phone, you know, cell phone pictures of some planets and stuff. And, um, uh, so, uh, yeah, the latitude and longitude was kind of crazy because you already meant, touched on that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it comes with a sock for your secondary mirror, you know, that's kind of, kind of crazy, you know, you put that over your secondary mirror before you put it in your case. And uh, yeah, it does fit in my car. So I got three payments. I did the, uh, you know, where they charge you like three, once a month for three months for the the payments. And, uh, I, you know, I didn't do, I'm not into astrophotography, but there's a lot of questions I got about astrophotography. Um, could you photograph DSOs with the go-to and tracking dive? And there, I know there's one, I think it's something Viper. Viper Dad or something. He's got he's got some real good. He's got the same scope, but he's got one of those ASI cameras that he does some awesome stuff with. And uh, so I got a I got I don't know I got a Canon T3i, but I don't even really know how to use the camera itself. And I got like a, a T ring and a and a Barlow, and I, I I don't I don't know. I've never tried to hook it up. I guess to the to the scope, or I don't know if I could reach focus, or I don't know how to stack pictures or frames. I don't know how to do exposures. I don't know how to record videos. <laughs> There's a lot I don't know because I've never, never tried, you know. But I think I have potential to do some cool stuff. I just so, <clears throat> but yeah, the scope was scope was awesome, and um, yeah, what did I see? Uh, you know, the Lagoon Nebula was really cool. I recently found the Veil Nebula with my 10 inch dive and that was awesome. The Veil Nebula is crazy because like you can't see it at all with if you're just you know scanning the Milky Way but if you put a Nebula filter in it you can definitely see it a lot. So that was crazy. And I looked at it last night in the 16 inch and I just like I don't know man it was like it's a weird different angle. It was just I almost almost didn't seem like I saw much of that. The cat's eye nebula, that was awesome. I definitely saw that. That was sweet, you know. And uh, oh yeah, one thing about the scope that I did not like that I might actually switch, switch with my ten inch is uh, the um, say you got a one point two five inch eyepiece in there, 
in the focuser. On the aperture, a 10-inch dial, you can you can take you know the the 1.25 inch eyepiece and the uh, you know holder out. You can take that out of the two-inch uh, you know focuser eyepiece holder, and you can screw a nebula filter or any sort of filter on the bottom of the 1.2 inch 1.25 inch eyepiece holder uh, and put it back in. You know, but with this one, they they're not threaded. You know, so if you, for example, if you wanted to look at the Cat's Eye Nebula with a um, 1.25 inch, you know, Explore Scientific 82 degree 11 millimeter eyepiece, and you wanted to put a, you know, Lumicon 2 inch Nebula filter, you know, UHC filter or something on it, you couldn't do it. You can't do it. Um, you can only use 2 inch eyepiece filters with 2 inch eyepieces. On this scope, which is, which is uh, you know, unfortunate. Um, so that was that was uh, that was that wasn't really cool. But you know, look around. There were, there were, yeah. I mean, there was some some cool stuff that I never never saw, never 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 seen before with this thing. Like uh, that cat's eye nebula was really cool. I feel like there's. Some other stuff. I should have taken notes and made a record of what. But uh, if you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. And uh, there's still a lot more that I have to go through. You know, I feel like with this. Yeah, we'll try to make some single videos. But this week, he just wanted to record, you know, just his first thoughts, his first day viewing with the new scope. He felt like he couldn't find as much information as he hoped on YouTube. So, hoping to help out some other customers. That's right.